Hey guys, welcome back to another video with the High Mountain Homestead. I'm talking about how to prune zucchini. I love zucchini. We eat so much zucchini and squash at our house. It is easily one of the most prolific uh, vegetables that you can, you can have in your garden. But if you want to make your zucchini even more prolific, uh, which basically just means you're giving more out to your neighbors because we always have more than we can eat, um, I'm going to talk about how to prune that. So if you are new to the channel, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. Um, if you like what you see, consider subscribing to the channel. But for now, let's talk about how to prune zucchini. What we've got here, this is our, our squash gourd patch type thing. So we've got a um, beautiful zucchini plant right here. It has given us half a dozen gigantic zucchini. Some of them are too big to even eat. So. Uh, we just give those to the chickens. Okay, so this plant is already doing great this year, but in order to get even more out of it, um, we're gonna prune some of it back. So one of the reasons to prune is that it will reduce the chances of it getting mildew. I personally have not had any powdery mildew uh, this year. It could be because we're in Utah and it is so dry and we're going through like record high heats here this summer but I know many other parts of the country experience powdery mildew. Okay, maybe the most important reason to prune is uh, for pollinators. You prune more and you let pollinators get in there and do their thing. You have a more prolific crop yield. They pollinate more flowers, you get more zucchini. And finally, if you strategically prune, you are basically teaching the plant to move some of its energy into producing a vegetable rather than producing um, producing leaves. Now something to keep in mind when pruning, um, your plant might not look as beautiful as it once did, but it is a healthier plant after you're done. So keep that in mind. Generally speaking, you're going to want to go after lower leaves first. Again, that just helps the pollinators get in there to the flower. So this can kind of be like a before shot. Uh, you can cut up to a third of the leaves off of this and it's going to be totally fine. So I'm going to keep cutting and I'll check in when I've got what I feel like is a finished product. So this is the pile. There's the, there are those two monster zucchinis I found. But here's the final product. So overall, I'm really happy with... Um, how much plant there still is left. Uh, I got to water this tonight and as you can see I've got I don't know almost a dozen other plants to be doing this with. This dude is going out of control right here and his some of his uh, leaves are starting to get shoddy so that's a good time to do it too. Uh, but yeah I've got plenty more to do. Not sure if I'll do it all this evening. But I've got like six squash in the house and zucchini and I give anytime someone knocks on our door I give one away And I'm just swimming in them. So I don't feel bad because these these go to use they feed the chickens They're just a little too big for me and my family. Hey, thank you for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it. If you did consider liking it on YouTube that goes a long way also consider subscribing but for now I've got to take this stuff and uh, go give it to the chickens before it gets too dark. So I will see you on the next video. I'm PJ with the High Mountain Homestead. Thank you for stopping by. These cayenne peppers over here. Those are gonna be so cool when they redden up because if you have really spicy foods like cayenne peppers, you feed those to the chickens. Chickens cannot taste heat apparently and uh, it makes their yolks red or at least a deeper orange which I think is pretty cool.